The Transformers. Robots in disguise. Nah, um, this is the story of the Autobots lightning strike. Spike, the young engineer friend of the Autobots, sat on a rock in the warm sunshine writing up his diary. The air was fresh after the storm which had raged during the night. The rain had fallen in torrents, the thunder had boomed and crashed, and the lightning had lit up the most inner parts of the Autobot base. It was strange, wrote Spike. The Autobots thought they were being attacked by the Decepticons. They rushed to their action stations, Optimus Prime and Jazz were ready to appeal to the attack. When the storm passed on, it seems that the thunder and lightning are unknown to that planet of Sabaton. Must be a very strange world. Spike put the diary in his pocket and made his way back to the base. As he drew near, a giant gleaming figure came towards him. It was Optimus Prime. The Autobot leader. He looked down at Spike. This is a very strange world, this earth of yours, he said. Spike grinned. Funny, he said. I was just thinking something like that myself. Other Autobots came out into the open. Hound pointed to a steep rock face some distance away. Look at the mountain. Didn't look that way yesterday. So I've gone, cried Jazz. Must have been struck by the lightning, said Spike. You mean those bright lights? said Sunshreaker. Whatever it was, it must have been powerful, cried Side Swipe. Spike's father joined in. Lightning is dangerous stuff, he says. I've seen it wreck buildings, fell trees, sink up oil rigs. Even a small melt of lightning can pack a heavy punch. Optimus Prime looked thoughtful. The Autobots were desperate to find a source of energy so they could rebuild their spacecraft and return to Cybertron. Could the answer lie in this thing called lightning? Tell me all you know about lightning, said Optimus Prime. Spike's father picked up a piece of twig and drew diagrams in the earth as he spoke. Lightning is really electricity, he said. We have electricity on Cybertron, said Dr. McFarland, but it does not fall from the sky and destroy things. We generate it in power stations, drives our machines. We also do that here on Earth, said Spike's father. But there is no way to control something as powerful as lightning. A single lightning flash is about a thousand megavolts. Perhaps Earth technology cannot be handled such forces, said Dr. McFarland. On Cybertron, we learn to deal with power you cannot even begin to imagine this is a chance we cannot afford to miss the Autobots must be prepared for the next storm tell Huffer I must speak to him as usual Huffer complained lightning you want to catch it you want it in a cage I suppose if you think that's the best then do it by all means said Optimus Prime just as long as it's ready before the next thunderstorm for the next week, Huff was hardly to be seen. He transformed into the top of the skies and went off on loan searches for materials. Once he returned to base to borrow some tools from Ratchet. Lightning energy converters, he complained to Ratchet. None of this nonsense on Cybertron. If I were back there, man. Another time, Huff asked Gears to help him with some heavy components. Although Gears complained, he did help, but each of them pretended to be more miserable than the other. Huffer worked hard on the project and finally was finished. He rolled, up, he rolled in one day and spoke to Optimus Prime. I suppose you want to see it, he said. Don't suppose I'll get any thanks, just a worn clutch and slow puncher? Huffer escorted his leader to a distant mountain. He pointed ahead. Optimus Prime could see nothing unusual. Where is it? He asked. Huffer activated control on the chest plate. From the top of the mountain there rose a slender lattice of gleaming metal. Slowly it rose up and stood with its top partly hidden by the drifting clouds. According to the earth people, lightning most often strikes tall objects, said Hopper. There was your lightning collector. It's the tallest thing for hundreds of kilometres. How do we extract the power from the lightning? I said Hopper. Under the mountain, said Hopper, is a cavern. They have built the energy converter. We'll have a test one during the next thunderstorm. Let's hope that the Decepticons don't find out. <laughs>
That was plan. As he spoke, a winged messenger was already on his way back to the Septicon headquarters. It was Laserbeak carrying news of the late Autobot activity back to Megatron, the leader of the Decepticon. Megatron studied Laserbeak's report, sent it to Sandwave. What did it sound like to you? Yes. It must be all you don't mind if that's on the truth, said Soundwave. From its size and location, it must have a great range, both the sender and receiving. Who are the Autobots sending messages to? asked Starscream angrily. It's the other Autobots we don't. We know nothing about. We must destroy this thing before it's too late. Now! I make the decisions, Megatron. Soundwave. Let us read all lead to this priest. Keep listening, watch. This creation of theirs may be very useful to us. I still say we should destroy it, said Starscream. Far we lead to the last daughter, but would have long since been reduced to a handful of rusting nuts and bolts. Guided by Lazebeak, the sound wave went swiftly to the Lonely Mountain. He stood on the nearby hill. Where is it? Yes. Where is the tall metal red mass? I see nothing. The top of the mountain was bare. Laser beak flew up and circled in the sky above the peak. There was nothing to be seen. Soundwave was about to leave the hilltop when his audio sensors caught a faint signal. It sounded like running machinery and synth books from somewhere under the ground. Laser beak gave a sudden screech. There was a movement on the mountain peak. Something rose slowly from among the rocks. The sound wave watch Hoffer's lightning collector rose into the sky till its top was lost in the haze. Deep in the underground chamber, Hoffer made some adjustments, unaware that he had been spied upon. For hours, the sound wave remained on the hilltop. He turned his audio sense onto their finest pitch. He tried every frequency. There was nothing coming from the mass at all. No radio, no infrared, no ultraviolet. Whatever the system the Autobots had devised, it was quite undetectable, even to an expert like Soundwave. Magtron must be told with this. Without denying, Soundwave moved all speed back to Septicon headquarters. Straight! The Autobots win it! shrieked Starscream when he heard Soundwave news. Megatron looked. Thoughtful. This technology is beyond even our wildest dreams. If we could learn his secret, we would have a powerful weapon. Wait a week, you return and keep watch on the Autobots while I make my plans. Megatron did not notice Starscream whisper to rumble and slip away from the rest of the group. Not knowing that they were being watched, the Autobots made the foul preparation for the first test of the lightning energy converter. Powerful cables were led from the base to the mass, deep in the mountain, and connected to the equipment in the chamber. Gears muttered to himself and to, and to anyone else who would listen. The whole thing was ridiculous. What if there isn't another storm, he said. What if there's no more lightning? There will be another thunderstorm sooner or later, said Spike's father. We just have to wait. Okay, we wait, said Gears. We've only been on this earth and yours for four million years, so let's wait. We can pick up the weather reports on the radio, said Spike. They'll tell us when the storm is due. Cheer up, Gears, says Blue Streak. If there isn't a storm, we can fly a flag on Huffer's mask. As we arrived at the Decepticon headquarters, transforming into Hula Dissars and Snorjo cassette. Soundwave slotted the cassette into his playback system, and the Decepticons listened to the descriptive scriptation of, of all that Lazebeak had observed. So much was still a mystery, but now it appeared that the Autobots had made something which was hidden inside the mountain. I must know what's so important that they have buried it upon Megatron. Do not tolerate those creatures, no, it's something that I do not. We will tear their secret from him. He coughs, scream, but friendly said he'd 
See him go off his rumble. Mug Tron roared with rage. The mindless bandwool. And guess what he's planning? He cried. Must stop immediately. Such comes. Scramble! The entire Decepticon force rose into the air and raced at top speed to stop speed before he destroyed the Autobots in their secret. Spike stood by the radio trying to tune in a local station to catch the weather forecast. The sky's clouding over, he said. I shouldn't be surprised if there's another storm soon. Turn the dial again. There's a few bars of music. The music stopped and the man was... Spoke. Here's the local weather outlook for the next four hours. The temperatures will stay the same, but a moist warm air stream from the west will move in later. A strong possibility of thunderstorms over the mountain. This is it, guys. Spike. A storm's coming up. What a planet, Mutter Gears. There's going to be a storm, so that's good. If Hopper's equipment is ready, said so Optimus Prime, let's not waste time. Autobots, transform! <laughs> the moment the Autobots, with Spike in his father in Hopper's cap, making their way to the mountain and lightning energy converter. Storm clouds were already gathering as the Autobots reached the mountain. A few spots of rain fell. These will be under cover in the chamber under the mountain, said Chaz. I want to advise that, says Hopper. We know nothing about this lightning thing. I intend to conduct this test from as far away as possible. There's no grand cliff over there, said Optimus Prime. We'll be out of the storm, but still able to see the mountain. Talking up their position, the Autobots watch Hoffer activate the control on his chest panel. Slowly, the slender mass on of the lightning collector rose from the top of the mountain. The autobots began to swirl around the lattice as the first rumbles of the storm sounded. In the gathering point, no one noticed Starscream and Rumble as they slipped in, in the underground chamber. Bing. Starscream stopped in the centre of the chamber and looked around him. The walls and roof were bare rock. The floor was paved with smooth plastic skin. In the centre of the floor was a mighty piece of machinery. The walked all around it. From each corner of the head high stone base, there was a smooth silver column. Each column supported a silver spear. Between the columns was a completing mass of insulters and cables. Thus they moved to the side of all green pavement. I thought we were going to smash this thing, he said. To the low frequency jolts and have just been a little bit true. It's not doing anything, said Starscream. It doesn't work. That rundown museum piece we have as a leader thought it was a secret radio system. Starscream moved with the light. Even at his left weapon, around the rocket chain, a voice rang out. Megatron strode across the chain, his fusion cannon aimed steadily at Starscream. Traitor, he would saboteur. Against my order, you would destroy this thing. I'm a man down museum piece, am I? I thought I would serve you in the Decepticon. Of course, it's a gloom for Megatron. The Autobots want to destroy us. This speech device will harm them. But it does nothing, so you said to yourself, quite a minute. They have extended their aerial resource. That has to be arrived. No doubt, in this very moment, they'll be able to send you a signal. They have found you, or there are other Autobots on the brain. I want to know, then we need to crush them all. In the south of the cliff, the Autobots appeared as the masters of the storm passed overhead. Lightning flashed among the storm clouds. It glared blue and white among the dark clouds. The light made bright reflections on the metal lattice of his mask. Pretty sure, said Jazz. Well, it's going to do something useful at making that contraption work inside the mountain. Contraption, said Hopper. Throw a head and more in it than loose nuts and bolts. You won't say things like that. My converter is not a contraption. Just be patient. 
Wait, be patient. Sound like more like a person than every day, so good. Why didn't... Wow, what was that? In this splitting crash, a jagged fork of lightning crackled out of the clouds and hit the tip of the mast, followed by another and another. In a swift ripple of blue fire, the lightning ran down the mast in the mountain. Inside the mountain, one was trying to hide himself. When a great surge of power knocked the Decepticons flying in all directions. There was a roaring in the air, metal bodies clanging and clattered as they fell. From a machine in the center, the chamber was spluttered and cracked as the energy converter took the lightning charge. The chamber was now lit with blue and white light from the machine. The electricity arced and crackled. So the spears glowed with power. It does nothing. It doesn't work. Lord Megatron starts being queen silently. In the shadows. What are they saying? What message are they transmitting? Megatron shouts the sound waves above the noise. Suddenly they just controls. I can't tell, said. Something has happened to my other radio sensors. It's malfunctioning. I get nothing for stacking. As he spoke, there was a loud hiss of a crack. A large blue arc of electricity shot from the machine and struck the rocky roof of the chamber. The electricity ran across the roof, then down the walls there glowed a flickered blue light. Scout put his hands on the wall. Next minute, it had been heard across the roof. In a shallow spot across the chamber, Skullbrook lay on the floor, still giving off smarts, tried to rise, but instead he began to transform. The transformation stopped halfway. Another shallow spot, he returned to his plain disguise. Major malfunction to report, he said. The Autobots weren't listening. The rider on starts to This machine can be stuck in. It can also be stopped, he shouted. I aimed the Norway projector at one of the silver spears and primed. So I hit the spear as the electricity ran back down to Starscream. It was sent sprawling across the floor. The Norway projector was scorched and buckled. It was useless. It's another one trap, cried another trap. Retreat! <laughs> Metron led the way to the chamber entrance. Then, now seemed alive with electrical energy. He talked and, and sparked from the walls and onto the metal bottles of the Decepticons. Control systems and sensors malfunctioned. Wine began to burn out. Fuses blew. A cassette, a cassette shot from Soundwave chest back, transformed into Ravage, the mechanical hand, with all its systems now. Functioning gave a snarl and hurled itself onto the savage stack on Megatron, its own leader. Megatron hit out with his metal fist and Ravage was thrown to the floor in a shower of sparks. Soundwave grabbed the creature and dragged it towards the entrance. But the electricity had been too quick for the stumbling Decepticons. As they reached the rocky arc, which led into the open air, a flickering light shot across the opening, forming a curtain of electricity and energy. As the retreating Decepticons Battles through, creaking and spluttering. They were now spotted by the Autobots through the rain which was now pouring down. The Autobots looked in amazement at their scorched and battered enemies. Where did they come from? said Dr. Mishbam. Hound watched the Insecticons as they made their way into the open. The rain hissed on the metal, on the hot metal. After they had gone, the train of smoke hung into the air. I thought I had picked up their signal from the first arrived to town. I wasn't sure. It seems that they thought our energy collector was a radio transmitter. They were trying to discover its secrets. Well, they certainly got the message, said Jazz. Hoffman pressed the controls on his chest plate as the slender mass disappeared into the mountain. Then he went inside to inspect the energy converter. It's a bit bent in place, he said, when he rejoined the others. Now I haven't got it quite right. I need some more work on it. As they prepared to leave, Rotman's plan looked across the mountain. The storm had passed and the moon shone on the clear sky. Energy from the sky will help us return to our own world, he said. It will also be the gift to the people of Earth after we have gone. And that is... The end! Da, 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 well, wasn't that brilliant? The next story will have the chance.
transformers with laser beats fuel.